everyone. Randy here again at the New England Wireless and Steam Museum. I picked up some castings just yesterday for a locomotive steam engine that had never been installed. It's the same type of slide valve mechanism that we were show, showing in a previous video that we have on some of the smaller engines here. And I thought it would be interesting to take a look at them just to potentially get some better insight into how they work internally. Might show a little better compared to uh, the, the ones that were completely assembled here that we just took the cover off. They're out in the shop. Let's go take a look. Before we get that far, I thought I would just show a little bit here about what I'm talking about. So this particular engine, a Sears and Roebuck engine, uh, uses a typical slide valve inside of the steam chest here. The uh, Sturdivant engine next looks like it uses a, a piston valve and I can see I'm only saying that because I can see a round cover up on the top of the steam chest. Kind of indicates to me that there's a, uh, a piston valve in there. Works about the same way except a, a cylindrical shape. And of course we had looked at in a previous video the Clark and Howard safe engine here um, which has actually the exact same type of cylinder casting assembly where we have the, the cylinder casting here, you see the boss in this area, and then the actual steam chest case is uh, bolted on. You see the parting line here in the bolt. So this is the same type of thing where it's all bolted on as what we're about to look at out in the shop. Of course, that's a slightly different valve mechanism inside, and I would encourage anyone to look at that uh, valves video that I had done previously to see that riding cutoff valve inside. Turning right around here, we have the Isbell Porter engine, a uh, slightly larger one here, and then a smaller one next to it that uses the exact same type of sliding valve assembly that we're about to go look at. So, you know, just as reference points here. Let's go out into the shop. Here we are on the bench in the shop. There's always a handful of projects going on here, and you see some indicators and a steam turbine there. We will get to those in some future videos. But right here is the casting that I was talking about. It's a pretty uh, nice looking cylinder casting. You know, not too old, certainly not original. This was some sort of a, a remake for a locomotive probably within the last 10 or 20 years. Doesn't look like it was ever finished being machined. Um, but quick overview, cylinder casting here, you know, very obvious with the cylinder bore there. We have the, um, the lower side head here for that bolt on. Um, the relief that's been put here is just uh, to be sure that we don't cover up the steam passage that's right near the end of the cylinder with this little neck once it goes in. And the uh, cylinder head for the top side of the cylinder here as well, same thing, relief. Uh, for the steam passages. The piston, uh, very typical iron spring rings there, just like a modern day uh, automotive engine. Uh, maybe not quite as elaborate, we don't have any overlap to the ends, but nonetheless, same idea. And the actual valve uh, casting, the valve uh, box with a steam chest with the slide valve installed in it. and. I suppose before we get into that, let's just look at the cylinder casting itself. So, relatively straightforward. Um, if anybody has seen some of the previous videos, they would recognize exactly what I'm talking about here with the three slots. So, the center one, easiest to see right now, is the exhaust passage and simply goes to this threaded connection here as the exhaust passage. Each one of the other two slots goes to uh, some ports here at one end of the cylinder and the same exact thing on the opposite end of the cylinder from that other slot and of course that is exactly what I was saying the relief in the valve uh, head is trying to avoid so once this is bolted on we want to be sure that that neck that locates it in the center um, doesn't cover those passages at all. So that's exactly what that's about. But other than that, it's uh, relatively simple. Um, the other ports, let's see, I know I saw them here somewhere. These other ports here are just cylinder drains. This would mount horizontally as it's designed for a locomotive. So that would be on the bottom of the, uh, 
of the cylinder and allow for draining of any condensation that was uh, you know, caught in the cylinder before it was preheated or anything that came through the line while it was being warmed up or what have you. So, just got a little prop here to hold that up. So, I think I might see some problems with this. Uh, maybe why it was never finished and why I was able to grab it the other day. So, the valve assembly simply bolts on the cylinder casting here. And it is missing a head. We have to put some sort of a... Uh, uh, valve a steam chest cover here where the steam would be able to go in now if you haven't seen any other videos this area is called the steam chest it's full of steam at all times and this valve is what controls the admission of steam through that port let's see that port there down into one end of the cylinder and then as the eccentric valve eccentric moves this it uncovers the port at the other end to let steam from the steam chest flow through there to this end of the cylinder, pushing the piston that way, and at which point this was, would oscillate back the other direction, uncovering this port, allowing steam to flow there, push the piston back the opposite direction in the cylinder. And uh, I glossed over it before, but um, you see this recess in the back. That recess is the exhaust passage, so as this is oscillating back and forth, um, we get a connection between two passages on one side, so that forms the exhaust pathway, sorry, uh, while steam is being admitted through this area here into that passage, and then changes the opposite way to create the exhaust passage in the opposite direction. Uh, between the last port and the center port while steam is admitted here. Now, I have the feeling that they never finished machining this or potentially cast it aside because they couldn't actually achieve what they wanted to. Um, you see right here in this casting that this port is noticeably uh, different in size from the opposite end of the cylinder. Uh, they're not straight at all. This surface was machined, but they obviously didn't get in to um, to clean up those passages at all. And I also noticed that when we put this valve assembly on, that there is absolutely no position that actually covers... Um, in fact, at one point here, we have a slight admission to both ends of the uh, of the cylinder and I don't think that that would ever work quite right uh, so I have the feeling that the whole thing was just not um, dimensionally acceptable or finished um, so it was just cast aside I'm also wondering a little bit dimensionally it actually seems as though the exhaust uh, you know the dimensions on the exhaust I'm just eyeballing the distance here between these two and that passage there seems as though that would probably work okay so I can probably do something to salvage this uh, as a, a demonstration here at the museum or something of that nature so still interesting to see them uh, taken apart take, see it taken apart and see all the internals it's uh, it's kind of amazing what they were able to do with such simple mechanics to harness the power of steam so the pressure behind it and control it at will through such simple mechanisms and create the motion that you know powered the industrial revolution really so there it is quick breakdown on a uh, slide valve cylinder and casting here at the New England Wireless and Steam Museum I wanted to thank everyone for watching again today please like and share these videos with your friends who might be interested and for more inf information follow the link in the video description below to the museum's homepage thanks again for watching